I'm going to brothers and sisters, I'm going to do the best I can today. Because that's all God requires of any of us to get up and say, thank you, Jesus. You know, God put me to bed last night. I didn't even take my medication. And I had the exact recordings of all my, my, my heart rates, my breathing, everything that my oxygen, my, everything is perfect. Like I'm a healthy person, even without the, you know, I'm talking everything, the, the blood thinner, all that twice in the last two days, I stepped down in some blood thinner. You know why? Because I'm walking by faith right now. I got to get a, get a hold of the cardiologist. The next two visits, if I'm my heart's running the right way, I'm throwing out that bottle of medicine. It's a process. You, you, you don't test God, you walk with God. And Timothy's good report, that's where we are today, brothers and sisters. Timothy's good report. And, and when I read this years ago, all I could think about was the books of Timothy. And the church today argues about the books of Timothy, both men and female. They're very argued, those books. And they're, they're almost drowning in the seminaries today because the seminaries are drowning with doctrines of men, psychology, and you're not going to find schools and colleges in the Bible. You're going to see that the, the disciples were regular people that were led by the Holy Spirit. That's what this book's all about. God. God's a spirit. And people don't even want to believe that. And they, they go to church and they want what they want instead of just doing what the book says. That's all churches, people. They spend more time in the world than they do in fellowship and union with the Holy Ghost. And I thank God he took me out of the world. It's not my, my priority anymore. It's Jesus. It's the word of God. So here we go. I pray that everybody gets something out of the 13 verses in the commentary this morning. Because I sure did. Wherefore, it says here, chapter 3, 1 Thessalonians. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. And these were the men of God that were going forth. They were fellow servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, we've been speaking about this for the last three books in the Bible. And St. Timotheus, our brother, and what did it say here? Didn't say he went to college. Nowhere. You go back and you look at your Bible and you read your Bible. And you're going to see that these men were filled with the Holy Spirit from the day of Pentecost. And their whole lives were based on Jesus Christ and getting the gospel out to other people and it says he was a minister of god and our fellow laborers in the gospel of christ to establish you that's us by the reading of the word of god through the grace of our lord jesus christ you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free the Bible says in James that we need to confess our sins, our faults to one another, that we can pray and be healed. And there's very little of that going on in churches today. It's come in, sit down, pass an offering, take in the money. There's charlatans that are, they, they're seeing money. They, someone, someone was ministering to me yesterday about Reverend Ike in New York. And I know Margaret knew about him. He started out good, and he got under the God of this world, and money became his God. And I used to listen to Reverend Ike when I was younger, and I knew there was something wrong because I was reading my Bible. So if you read your Bible and you believe the word of God, you're going to start to have some discernment. It says, fellow laborers in the gospel of Christ to establish you, that means us. And to comfort you concerning your faith. 
So when your faith lines up with God's word, there's there's a comfort, and there's you're just you're you're just so blessed because you realize, man, God loves me. God's given me a way to walk, and all you got to do is walk. Faith. Believe in what you don't see, but receiving what you hear. Faith comes by reading and hearing the word of God. So your addiction should be in God's word. Not in wine, not in whiskey, not in drugs. You know, there's people that go from one drug to the other. And they profess to be Christians. Instead of being in the word of God and submitting for prayer. The desperate get delivered people. What, what does it say here in verse three this morning? That no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. And I had to say that to my brother this morning. I'm tired of hearing him having fear. Because God doesn't give us the spirit of fear. Get rid of everybody in your life and just get with God. Jesus said, come to me. I said that to my brother, Robert. And he's getting there. He's going to get there, that young 23-year-old. He needs to just slow down, quit reading books, and just read the word of God. That's what I had to do. I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost because I put the brakes on in my physical, normal, crazy life. And I surrendered my heart to Jesus Christ because I had all the things of the world. From one end of the, 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 the regiment to the other, I went to the islands. I did everything. I did everything that was against the word of God. And God saved me. That's part of being saved. There was a sister that texted me early this morning. Please pray for, for my husband. I have to, I'm driving him 50 miles to put him in a rehab. She didn't listen to teaching. She didn't listen to the word of God. They were in deliverance camps. They got no help. If that don't get you upset in the morning, and I'm a stranger to it all, I'm being asked to pray. So what, what does that show you? We've got to pray, people. We have to read the Bible. We have to believe the Bible. And, 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 and people do not heed instruction. Forget me as a, a brother in Christ, but they don't even read the Bible and do what the Bible says. Warn a person once, warn them twice, then have nothing to do with them. I mean, there's ungodly soul ties in marriages, in relationships. And the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? People, you're calling yourself Christians. You're not even doing what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, takes a sister to amen that. That's the word of God, people. You know? For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it had to come and pass, and you know. You know, as I read this, you in your own hearts, think about all the things you do. Think about what your family does. Think about what your acquaintance, think about what people you love do sometimes. What a testimony this morning for me to come into. Because I prayed for Steve yesterday. We fellowshiped with Steve. He was, I called him up. I said, are you okay? No, I'm not. And then he had his brother coming in from Florida to Canada. And to hear his sister-in-law profess Christ last night. That's the joy of the ministry. It's not I'm afraid. It's not I can't do. You can do all things through Christ. Go to the elders, go to the churches, ask for help. If a, guy, if a guy's a leader in a church, an elder in a church, yeah, my, my brother Charles, you know what he said to me? 
Pastor, send some of them to me because we're starting to get more and more people. And I'm going to start doing that because I waited three years for him to retire from his job. And now he's retired. So I got another brother that's available to stop what he's doing and do deliverance and do pray with people. It's all done in God's time. You don't have to rush God. I didn't. I didn't really start getting. I got more effective now as I got older because I don't have the things in the world occupying my brain. You know, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. Wow. He sent. They're bringing this word in. So today we can examine ourselves and know our faith. Listen to where it's going to take us. Lest by some means the tempter, that's the devil, have tempted you. That's all that's going on when you're afraid. You're a child of God. Rebuke it. I have to. Steve has to. There should be testimonies, not casualties. We're to edify and build each other up to talk back to the devil. It only takes two. Whenever two or more gather, he's in the midst. It only takes two people, three people to pray, and you can move mountains if you're on the same page. You don't get together with people and give fables, lies. God knows everything that's going on, and, and we found that out. My little brother Gerald was on the phone with me last night because. That's the only time he got to be on the phone with me. And he was in total agreement about what we see going on out here. Why? Because it's all in the word of God. The word of God says it right here again today. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor was in vain. In other words, you people don't want to hear what we're saying. These were men of God that were telling you to put your faith in Christ Jesus. It's no different today. The devil's having a heyday. He's got three quarters of the world in his pocket. And he's got a bunch of lukewarm Christians. Yeah, well, they wave the, the word of God, but they don't really do it in their heart. You're supposed to be salt prepared to help and do any time. Some of the best deliverance come just in a divine moment when you leap out in faith. You heard Steve this morning, I rebuke you. It's when, when he leaped out and attacked back that grace came in. Heaven came down and glory filled his soul. Some people don't even know the songs, the hymns that they even sing. It's just a bunch of words. And God's a spirit, people. It says, I, mean, I got to read this again. You guys got to hear it. Lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. Watch where it goes here in this little writing to the church today. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings, what? Of your faith and charity. Charity is the greatest gift. It's charity is love. It's unconditional. It goes back to the cross. There's so many people that get mad at so many people. I know people that, that, that don't want to talk sometimes because they get angry. They got a problem. They need deliverance. <laughs> It says that you have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Well, that's good brotherly love as far as I'm concerned. But watch what it turns into here. Watch what the admonishment of us, he's, the, the, the word of God is talking to all of us here. It says, therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live, if ye stand fast in the Lord. That's when you put on the brakes. You turn everything else 
down and you put your, your heart and soul back into scripture. You stand in steadfast in the Lord. God's not going to sit here and have a conversation with you. You're going to sit down and listen to the word and put it into action. That's what be putting on the full armor about. That's what standing fast in the Lord is all about. You're going to stand up for Jesus. We used to sing a, a contemporary song years ago. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. I mean, it's not a hymn. It's a spiritual song. Some of you that were with us in the last chapter, you understanding where I'm coming from. You know, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. There's many spiritual songs. There's many new songs being written today that are beautiful. They're pleasing to God's ears. Instead of condemning it, once you learn how to worship God in spirit and truth. You know, I am not the devil. I don't serve the devil. I preach against the devil. And God gives me grace. Otherwise, there'd be no grace, people. We'd all be going to hell because everybody sins. You, you look at all these big ministries and how many of them benefited in money and have, are falling apart. You, you haven't seen nothing yet. That, that great tribulation is going to come down on the world once the one world order. All this stuff that's been written to us is going to happen. Are you prepared to stand for Jesus? Or is it it's just a figment of your imagination? It's an excuse for I'm a Christian. You know, a real Christian walks in the word of God. Sometimes we need a little help from other believers. Sometimes we need to learn to be teachable. We need to hear correction. How about just hearing God's word? For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. And listen to this. You don't find Christians like this today. Listen to verse 10. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might, and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. That's what they were doing. The writers of these epistles were sold out for the kingdom of God. Or they wouldn't have been praying night and day. We wouldn't have the, the 66 books if God didn't choose certain people to lose their lives. Now, God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you so that you receive what you're reading here this morning. Well, the biggest thing I got up here in the beginning, when I got to verse 10, I said, oh, there it is again, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Chew on that for a few days. Because he says, now God himself, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our way unto you and the Lord make you, us, to increase and abound in love one toward one another. I don't know about you, but I get convicted when I drop the ball with someone. And man, I spent hours yesterday because someone dropped the ball with what they were supposed to do. And it continues as I get texts every day from different individuals. And some of you people know the people that are falling on their faces. And everybody's had the opportunity to help people, but we're not God. They're lacking in faith. They're not doing what the book says. Here, the Lord make you to increase, abound in love one to another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Why? To the end, he may establish your what? Your hearts. I've been preaching this for so long unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the 
saints. I mean, you got to really be a believer to even sit down and chew on the word of God. More of Jesus, less of yourselves. There's no, there's no prepping for what I do here. It's a daily life right now for me. I, I have to get attacked by everybody. Why do you do this? Why are you doing that? Why? Simple. What should you do when people you love need your help, but you cannot go to them? The new believers in Thessalonica desperately needed Paul's ministry, but he was not able to return to help them. So he did what he could. He sent Timothy. When, when I was studying this yesterday, and Charles said to me, he said, Pastor, you got so much on your plate. You're battling to get off all the medication. You talk to people seven days a week. You never take any time down. And he says, man, I'm, gonna, I'm getting involved. I'm really going to get involved. Start sending people toward me because I know where you're at now. You retired. You've been serving God since you retired. Let me help. And, and that's what Arthur said to me, the Arthur that ain't nobody sees anymore, but he talks to me every week. He texts me every other day. And he's getting stronger. And he told me he'd get up here in the fall, him and his wife. Well, this isn't, there, there's, there's no, I don't get nothing out of this except maybe something good when I get to the other side in heaven. We're trying to help people. Gerald, he's trying to help people. I'm so grateful to God that he came into uh, HBC and, and Jason said, get over there to the house of prayer. And, and, and he fit in to help me do what I'm doing, to teach me how to do the internet. But better than that, he's available to help me pray for people anytime I need them, as long as it's at night. I don't bother everybody else. I don't bother people that are just coming in here to the prayer group because you got to have time to pray for people. It's not a name it and claim it ministry. It's a real war. And that's why most Christians don't touch it because they're, they're living their best life now. They get up every day to serve self, to be entertained. And you don't think the devil knows that? First, he sent Timothy to minister to the church. You know, when I read this when I was younger, I went right to Timothy 1, 2, Titus. Because God sent Timothy to minister to the church. And we are the church. We're the body of Christ. And you, you can't tell me how many people follow Timothy 1 and 2 and Titus because people don't like me. I preach it. A preacher preaches the word of God, doesn't preach what you want to hear. Try to get someone qualified to go. Then he prayed for them, verse 10, because prayer is not limited by time or place. Your prayers for your loved ones will do more good than you realize. So just keep praying. Even if they're not walking, just keep praying for them. Father, put laborers in front, laborers behind them. Sometimes we can't reach people, but if we pray for people, somebody else reaches them. It's not about us. It's about the prayers getting answered. Paul encouraged them by writing them a couple of letters. His great concern was not their conduct or safety, but their faith. You know, I don't call everybody when we're doing some serious deliverance. I get a few people involved and we have to battle. And even when the person falls, we pick the person up and we get right back to battling. Because we know our God. We know God wins. We've read the book. That's the faith you need to be to be in the ministry of deliverance. It's a salvation ministry. It's part of the full salvation. But if you're not winning souls, you're not doing the fullness of God. I, I mean, it's all there. 
Why? Because you got the Holy Spirit in you. So if you obey the word of God and begin to exercise your faith, you're going to you're going to see a move of God, not only in your life, but in the lives of others. And the word of God will give us comfort because we have great concern for the people around us. But the biggest thing you're going to see is their faith is going to increase. Their love is going to increase. Their obedience to the Lord is even going to increase. But you got to minister. You got to be, you got to be the salt. That's why when Jesus said, do you think there's going to be salt on the earth? The salt brings out the flavor, the goodness of the grace and love of God in people's lives. Perhaps today you could write a letter or send a card to someone who needs your encouragement. Today we have texting. Don't you get it? It's not about us. It's about God's kingdom. You know, and, and when, when, when something touches my heart, and I know it's the living truth of the word of God, I always sit there. I save what I've learned, whether it's another preacher, whether it's a brother or a sister, and I send it out to people. And you'd be surprised, just that little thank you. I, I have a cardiologist who's a believer. He does heart surgery. And every time I send him a teaching, and every, every time I send him pictures and stuff like that, he says, I just love what you're doing, brother. And when I go to see him, the first thing he does when I go into the office, he wraps his arms around me. He's my little brother. And he says, I love you, Charlie. And I say, I love you, Joe. That's the relationship we're all supposed to have with one another, period. It's like Dave said. He says uh, that teaching that Gerald put up because Mike Deers finally allowed when stuff to go up on the internet. And, and there's going to be a really good move of the Holy Spirit because there's people out there in this, this last generation, they've never heard of Win Morley. You don't know how many people I talk to. I always question them. Do you, have you read Win's, Win Who? Win Worley? No. I said, you need to read some of his books. Not because he walked perfectly, but God used him mightily because he had faith in Jesus Christ. And when you listen to him, people that are seeking God, they're, the Holy Spirit in them bears witness with the Spirit of God that's moving through that old preacher that went home to be with the Lord. But we're not to worship when, we're to worship God. We don't want people to worship us. We want people to worship God. And that's what it's all about. Because, see, when we start worshiping man and, and, and think about, oh, that guy, you're no different than the Roman Catholics lifting up saints. What were saints? I truly believe that some of the people that Catholicism and orthodoxy, and, and because I've read some of the books by the orthodox priests, they weren't Roman Catholics. And they were fervent. God used these men in the 1700s, the 1600s. The blind saw, the crippled walk. Regular testimonies, they're in books. And that's why those religious groups said they were men of God or women of God. Just by God showing up in their walk. That's why I'm adamant right now about sisters need to get into doing deliverance. And Jason gave me insight on it. But you know what? Jason gave it to me. But I haven't sat down and talked with some of the sisters yet. And that'll come because that's the desire of my heart. That if if the sisters have the grace and the power of God to operate, there are things that sisters are more comfortable sitting down with other sisters and talking about, just like men should be praying with men. But in the beginning of the church, it was men that were doing the work. 
Now it's neither male nor female. You, anyone can do the work of God. It's God's spirit that does the work through us. So I think, I think this chapter really surmises it all at the end. You know, I could sit here and, and tell you the little parts, the little morsels of today's word. Let at Athens alone. Apparently Silas was not with them. You know, and that goes back to the reading of scripture. Every book has a different teaching for different groups of people. God raises up men and women today to share what they're learning. And you can share it in fellowship. There's nothing wrong with that. Timothy, he was a minister of God, is a various reading probably substituted for God's fellow workers. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. Go back to the book. We've already read it. But if you don't remember, you go back and you read it again until it becomes part of your heart, your faith. You know, someday we might not have the Bibles, but we'll have Christ Jesus in our hearts. You know, what do you think that warfare prayer is? It's an extension to slow down what's coming. And if, and if, if there be a handful of people, God can slow it down because of people's faith. You know, I'm, I'm a very straightforward person. Pastor Worley was around for a long time, but nobody took the bull by the horn. And that's enough said. Okay. Has the sense of paying back something owed, Paul repays God in the currency of thanksgiving. Every one of us should be thankful and grateful to God every day for our salvation, and it shouldn't be kept inside. We should be proclaiming it to other people, as Steve did last night in Canada, and his sister-in-law professed Jesus Christ last night. And that's just one member in his family. When I came to know Steve six years ago, he was so excited about Jesus. Every week he was trying to lead someone to the Lord. He was walking up to people in the post office. He was walking up to people in the supermarkets. I do the same thing. I don't broadcast what I do. I do it every day. It's part of my life. It's part of my walk. I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I believe it. I walk in it. Here, that woman that called Maureen, she called me yesterday. I ministered to her. And as I was ministering and my wife and me, my wife put a head covering on and we started binding and loosening. She started manifesting. I've never met her, never talked to her before. That's faith, people. That's God showing up when he needs to show up. I see my sister Doris is here. Doris, I got to talk to you. I want you part of something new I want to try to do on the internet. And I would really like you to get involved. And we'll talk later about that. I'll give you a phone call. For now, we live. Okay, so listen. Know your faith. That was in verse 5 this morning. You know, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I said, to know your faith. Commentary breakdown. Paul was anxious to know the spiritual condition of the assembly. And you heard me, Dave, you were cutting in, cutting in. You're so fearful. You need to be quiet sometimes. Maybe Pastor Mike was right with what he wrote me to slow down and let you simmer for a while until we know you're not giving the enemy any credence because I don't give the devil nothing. I tread over serpents and scorpions. I go to God. I pray. I fast. I don't bring fear into any situation. I tell people it's on you. You got to be strong in the Lord. It says here, faith. Paul was anxious to know the spiritual condition of the assembly. The tempter is another name for Satan. Well, if God doesn't give us the spirit of fear and you're moaning and groaning and woe is me, that's the devil in you. 
just like Yeshua, just like anything else you're battling and going through. When we pray, the next time we pray, we're going after the fear in you because you ain't addressed it yourself. Render has the sense of paying back something owed. Paul repays God in his thanksgiving. I thank God every day that I wake up. I thank him for the breath that I have, that I have another day in front of me so that I can serve God, period. And then throughout the day, even when I walk up the stairs this morning, I was thanking God I was able to walk up the stairs. Man don't live by food, bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you've been in the, the darn war in the saints book enough, you'll understand you got to saturate yourself in the word of God. You don't have to be in war on the saints every day, but you need to be in the word of God every day, people. Perfect, complete. That's what perfect means. Paul stays with the Thessalonians. It was brief. It was an introduction that he could not complete the work to his satisfaction. He longed for the opportunity or the remedy for the deficiencies that they had and they were lacking in faith. When I read this years ago, the only thing God said to me is faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I said to myself, forgive me, Father, I need to read my Bible. I need to put my faith in you. It's not just putting your faith in, oh, I believe in you, Lord Jesus. No, faith comes by hearing the word of God. And the more you hear it, godly sorrow brings repentance. You start really doing what the word of God says in your life. Coming to the Lord. Again, Paul uses the term pararousia to refer to Christ's second coming, repeating it for special emphasis. And saints used here is the masculine plural, refers to God's holy people, maybe the believers. Go back and look at Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. First Thessalonians, we'll hit that tomorrow in four with the angels. And then the gospel of Mark. 838. In the light of the problem cited, the former ideas are likely in view. And, you know, the commentaries always go past and forward, past and forward, because it's all scripture that bring you to understanding who Jesus Christ really is. And once you have that faith, you're like an airplane that's flying and you're happy. And the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. And, you know, sometimes you got to separate from unbelievers. Sometimes you're not ready to go into the, the lion's uh, den and deal with the roaring lions until you get yourself prayed up, walking in the spirit, you know? Because when, when the lions, them roaring lions come at you, you're going to get devoured. And that's why God warns us when we bring the good news to someone once, twice, kick the dust off. In other words, you don't, you just don't continue to hang with those kind of people. You're not ready to. You got to be strong in the Lord. And that means you better know the word of God. And for all those that are listening as I'm closing this little message, 13 verses, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, I pray that what came out of my heart today, because I only gave you the commentary just now, the last four, five, maybe four minutes, three minutes, and I, I gave you some out of the other commentary, so that's two commentaries I've put into these 13 little verses and may God bless you and keep you. And if you don't know Jesus, do what I did. Ask him to teach you. That's all you got to do. Surrender your heart to Jesus Christ. And God will teach you. Open your Bibles and read. And be careful with today's Christianity. That's all I can say. Because there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. 
there, there's a lot of different opinions in the body of Christ. And if you read and you ask God to teach you, he, Pastor Worley taught that. That's where I get this from. He says, if you read something, you don't know it, just wait on the Lord, go back and read it again. That's why, that's why we preach over and over again, because sometimes it, you had to know the natural sheep to understand why God calls us his sheep, because sheep wander. And if you don't have a good shepherd, you don't have somebody that's caring about every sheep that's under his, his vision. That's why I always say, when you get into the big churches, the pastors don't even know you unless you give a lot of money and you do. And, and man, that's, that, it's all bad as far as I'm concerned. And I'm a nobody. I don't care to ever be anybody, but I care that what I'm teaching gets on the internet and God's given me a way to get it up there now. And hopefully it'll help somebody else when I'm long and gone. And, you know, I'm smart enough to make those provisions already. I have people around me that have already stepped up in the other generation and said they're going to keep this stuff going on. And, and that's all I want. God's will to be done not only in my own life, but in all your lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.